So, last Thursday an embargo dropped for Red Dead Redemption 2 and the internet was flooded with games journalists waxing lyrical about Rockstar's latest cowboy em up. I too got to play the game. I drove 220 odd miles up to New York and back on Friday to play the game myself. Uh, but I did so after I had spent a good deal of time reading what everyone else had thought of the game. And when I was reading that stuff, I got the sense that there was something new that this game was doing that was really exciting people that wasn't really about all the things you can do in the game. A sort of untangible je ne sais quoi or something that everyone who played it seemed to feel. So when I went up to play it, I was less interested in detailing all the things you could do, and more I wanted to tap into what exactly that was. For my time playing the game, I also had that feeling of something incredible that this game was doing that I'd never felt before. And so I spent the drive home and most of the, the weekend thinking about what exactly that was and trying to put words to it. To try and explain what it was about this game that felt more than the sum of its parts. So that's basically what this video is. I'm not going to get into story spoilers or much into the detail of what you can do in this game. I'm mostly going to try and communicate what that thing is, that sort of amorphous quality that Red Dead Redemption 2 has that's getting everyone so excited. To do this I have come up with a three layer system. It's like a cake or a YouTube list video, I guess I've just made one of those, that'll hopefully try and communicate what it is about this game that's familiar and what's different. So here we go. Layer number one, this is a Red Dead Redemption game. Surprise, this game plays like a Rockstar open world game. You have a gun, you can shoot things, you ride around on a horse, there are missions. You can fail those missions, you can wander out of the mission area and have to redo them. There's an open world to explore, your character is interesting and talks to people. Those people are interesting. You can steal horses and punch people and look at the big skybox and go, wow, that's a really beautiful sky. Sorry, I don't want to be reductive, but just for those who are wondering, because they read all the stuff about how detailed this world is, it still feels like a Rockstar open world game. Don't worry, next layer. Layer number two, new features, more detail. This is what most people were reporting on, all the cool new things you can do in this game. And that's kind of what we've come to expect from a new Rockstar open world game, is that it takes all the things we enjoyed from the previous one and then adds in a bunch of extra stuff. So there's loads of extra stuff in here. There's entire list videos about the graphics and how good they look and the weather system and how good the interior lighting is. The detail and physicality of this world, how things like your weapons degrade over time. They don't break, but you have to clean them to make sure that their stats are at their highest level. If you go in the water, your weapons will get waterlogged. If you kill somebody out in the open, you should hide their body in a bush or something so that nobody reports the murder to the authorities. How if you shoot a coyote too many times, the pelt might get ruined and then you won't be able to skin it and sell it. But you can probably still sell the carcass so you can throw that over your horse and bring it to the local butcher. How you can open drawers and open doors and smash into doors if they won't open. There's a lot of things you can do with doors. How you have this camp of characters that all require different things from you and wander up to you and talk to you. They don't, it's not like a game where you, you walk up to a quest giver and it punches in and they go, blessings of Stendar upon ye. It's more naturalistic. People kind of just wander up to you in the camp and people call out to you. You can call out to people as well as they're riding by. In fact, you can talk to every NPC in this game. That's probably the biggest thing actually, is the fact that you can de-escalate conflict using talk. Actually, you can escalate it too. And from the limited time that I played, people were different. They wore different clothes and talked differently and had different attitudes. It's easier to rob somebody who's skittish than somebody who threatens you back or puts their hand on their holster. So too, is it more interesting to de-escalate conflicts or perhaps intimidate a witness who saw you mug somebody? The game world also has an interesting memory when it comes to those things and also the main quest. A bunch of people I met in the town of Valentine, for instance, all kept referencing this fight that had happened. I think it's the fight that you saw in this trailer. So it's probably part of the main story. But having them reference that and sort of speak to your character, perhaps based on some choices you made in that mission, I can't tell, it fleshed out that world and felt more grounded and interesting. That's a sort of a small selection of the interesting features that are in Red Dead Redemption 2, but it's the next layer, the sort of unknown layer, where things get really interesting. I don't really have a name for this yet. Maybe it's emergent storytelling, maybe it's a new evolution of emergent gameplay, or just the way open world games will work from now on, I'm not really sure. But in any case, this is the sort of untangible thing that this game is doing that makes it feel different. It kind of works like this. All of those features that I talked about, all of those rich features that make the world feel deeper and more interesting, 
they all kind of have a memory and they all kind of interact with each other in ways that we're perhaps not used to in games. That coupled with the fact that what we previously would have called things like, you know, open world activities or side quests have been kind of elevated up in terms of meaning and interactivity and, and interest to the point of the main quest. So there's more of an equilibrium when it comes to just the things you do in this world. And what all that does is sort of create a, a game feel that isn't just you going around, you know, doing the main objective or doing the things the game tells you to do, but feels more like being pushed in different directions by the choices you make and by the stuff that kind of happens. The missions themselves, the main missions, at least the ones I saw, felt like scripted missions you play in any open world game. But sort of stepping back from that, it's the broader sense of how the game plays out feels a lot less like going from A to B and more getting distracted and doing C, D and E and then having the things you did in those things impact B. I only played the game for an hour and 15 minutes, so getting a sense of this is kind of a little bit difficult, but I have some examples which kind of feed into this feeling. So at one stage I was wandering uh, down a dirt road at night time, the sun was setting, and I saw a, a horse with a lantern in a distant field. So I went over to the field and I noticed that there's this guy crouching through the grass with a gun in his hand. I used the context menu to hit greet, and I'm like, hey, what you doing there? Which was, in its own right, was amazing. And he responds and basically says, go away, leave me alone. I could have mugged him or something, but you know, it, it feels more like people are kind of doing their own thing and then I'd have to hide the body and a lot of stress and he probably didn't have that much money if he's hunting at night time, so I just decided to leave. But when I was about 40 yards away, I hear this gunshot go off, not towards me, just away in the mesa. And then the guy shout, he went, woohoo, did you see that shot? So that interaction was interesting. So I walked over to him and did the context menu to say something to him, like positive. And uh, Arthur said, wow, you're a really good shot. And then the guy responds something along the lines of, oh yeah, I just needed to get my dinner. And then he skins the pelt, as he's talking to me actually, he skins the pelt, and then picks it up, throws it over his shoulder and says to Arthur, well, I'll be seeing you. And then walks over to his horse, literally stuffs it in a saddlebag. You can see them doing it, hops on the horse and leaves. So I could have mugged that guy. It would have been interesting because he already had his gun out. So maybe we would have had a Mexican standoff or he would have shot first or I don't know. Or I could have stolen his horse or stolen his pelt. But in the end, it was just like a weird, interesting interaction that I had. And I kind of forgot what direction I was going in and ended up doing something else. And that on its own isn't really that incredible. It's a fun, interactive, Thing that happened and the Rockstar rep said that they'd never seen that happen before and it didn't feel scripted, it felt like just something that this engine was doing. And that was such an interesting thing that happened. It wasn't until later when I was at the camp that uh, I wandered in and the cook sort of walks up towards me and does like an Aaron Sorkin walk and talk uh, as I'm just walking through the camp and he's, you know, stirring a pot and telling me, you know, if you get some meat it'd be really handy because I'm trying to put together this like, you know, meal for chow time and and I made me think, oh, I could, I could go off hunting now, but actually if I shot that guy and taken his meat, then I could probably just give it to the cook right now. But then I thought, actually, I did learn something. I learned where coyotes are. If this guy is hunting for his dinner at nighttime, then he probably knows the right place to hunt stuff. And even that on its own isn't that revolutionary, right? We've seen stuff like that in scripted games before, but it's the nature of this world that keeps presenting things like that happening and makes you reevaluate how this world works and reevaluate what you, you should be doing at any moment. That's what's making this interesting. I have another example. I tried to rob a pharmacy, right? So this guy, there's a illegal drug thing happening in the back of this pharmacy. I go out to the front clerk, kind of GTA 5 style, put my gun up um, to threaten him. I accidentally shot him straight in the chest. He hits the ground and I'm like, oh no, I just killed him. And then he scared me because he jumped back up again, holding his wound and ran outside to get the sheriff. Long story short, I get hunted down by a bunch of lawmen. I end up getting my horse killed uh, and I die too or die or whatever and respawn. Um, somewhere outside of the town. It's still a video game. But now I need a horse. My horse is dead. So I can go in and buy a horse at the stable. I tried to uh, hold up a guy and he had like tuppence on him. So it wasn't really worthwhile. I then had to intimidate this other guy who saw me rob him. Um, I did so just by walking up to him and giving out to him. And then he told me to go away. And then I took my gun out. And then he was like, oh, okay. And promised not to tell anyone. But I'm still at a horse. So I'm looking around and I see this carriage with this, not this carriage, but a carriage not dissimilar to this one with a little horsey on it. So I detach the horse from the carriage. I'm feeling very proud of myself for figuring that out. And I wander around the back of the horse to see if I can like get on. And as I do, the horse like straight up just like boots Arthur right in the face, kicks him right in the face. 
I don't fall on the soft grass uh, beside the horse. He kicks me into the dirt road. So Arthur falls in like two inches of mud, totally cakes him, side of his face covered in mud. This is a fun, interesting thing that happens. We love this. We love when characters get wet up to the point where they're in the water. It's like, yeah. But what's interesting about this is that people actually react differently to you if you're totally caked in mud. So if you go into shops and stuff, people are like, get out. What's wrong with you? In the same way as if you're drunk in this game, all the interactive you know, menu stuff, conversation stuff changes too. So this is a problem. I'm trying to like buy a horse or like get someone to help me get a horse because I can't find any other horses to rob. Um, so I need to clean myself. So the Rockstar rep tells me there's a bath in one of the hotels. So I go into the hotel, the guy remembers me from the main quest, I guess, the fight I had, comments on the fact that I'm totally caked in mud and is like, okay, I'll let you in to wash yourself, go ahead. So I wash myself, I get the special bath where a nice lady comes in and helps wipe me down and listens to Arthur prattle about his boring baths he's had in the path. He talked about how he used to bathe with his dog, it was really weird. So this whole thing happens just because I got kicked in the head by a horse, I have to go and clean myself. And then it has knock-on effects, right? So you wander outside and then suddenly the stores are closing and people have left, so there's no horses just lying around. I could probably steal one from outside a saloon or something, but it'd probably be easier just to wait for the stables to open up the next morning. There's a button you can press outside stores that's just wait till morning, so I did that. And then you get a horse and you stick your own saddle on it and you go on your merry way. And again, that story in and of itself, not the craziest, most interesting thing that's ever happened in a game, but it wouldn't have happened in another game. My horse wouldn't have died. The horse wouldn't have kicked me into the mud. People wouldn't have interacted with me differently because I was covered in mud. It's all of these tiny little systems that are interacting with each other and forcing you to do different things. That, along with the sort of more intimate, deeper, more detailed and physical worlds that you inhabit, it's, it creates a different sense of a game. This doesn't feel like a game where you're just, you know, a third person character sprinting around from mission objective to mission objective, doing the things that's on your shopping list of stuff you're supposed to do until you get to the credits. It feels like a world where not only are you more in touch with the physicality of the universe around you and how having your gun up is different to having your gun down or having your gun on your horse is different to here or that you're covered in mud or not or any one of these things, but also that the mission structure, it's almost like Rockstar trying to get rid of what a mission is. So that there's this even playing field of narrative where instead of doing all the things, you're bouncing from one activity to another. Your stuff is happening that's pushing you in a different direction. And I think that's the feeling that people have, that this world feels like it has more weight to it, that it's more textured, that the things that are happening are just more interesting and that instead of playing a game with missions, you're problem solving small human moments on a moment by moment basis. Obviously, it's impossible to tell if that's actually what they're doing in this game from a two hour demo where your hands are on the controller for about half the time. Steven Totillo said something similar in his Kotaku article, and I totally agree. But what it felt like to me was an interesting system that screamed back when I screamed at it, that interacted believably to the things that I was doing, and that also interacted with me in ways that I'd never felt in an open world game before. Time will tell if that's the game that Rockstar have attempted to make, but it seems like they're swinging for the fences with this one. They have eight studios working on this, and you know, as the inventors of this genre and the sort of studio team that has attempted to push this genre forward every chance they've gotten, a game that they've worked on for this long with this many people, you get the sense that they're trying to do something with it. And what I think they're trying to create is this game that feels less like a bunch of story missions connected by a big map, and more a world that distracts you and interrupts you and makes you make decisions not based on your preference, but based on the needs of your community and the things that are stopping you and preventing you from doing the thing you want to do. So that's why I think people are excited about Red Dead Redemption 2, because it's doing something that feels new in this genre, a genre that's felt pretty stagnant. It feels like Rockstar, as they've done in the past, are adding a new color to the palette of open world game design. And I think for me, as both a fan of Rockstar games, but also a fan of the open world genre, that's what's exciting. 
Look, I'm 32, I've been playing this genre for a decade and a half, and the thing that irritates me most about playing games now in my life is that most of the time I understand where the puppet strings are, right? Most of us do. Those of us who are into games, we, we see the systems and we interact with them and we get joy from seeing what happens when we interact with them. But this felt like a game where I didn't really understand what the systems were. I couldn't see what it was doing. And the unknown that was occurring there, the, the fact that I didn't know where important story stuff was happening or what elements of the game were, were being remembered and what weren't, that was what was exciting. But from the short time that I had with it, as somebody who's a jaded open world player at this stage, it made me very excited. I guess the proof will be in the pudding. We'll all find out together on October 26th. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer as many of them as I can in a follow-up video. And until then, have a good time. I have to go edit a lot of documentaries. Bye.